multinational enterprises have directly invested in countries abroad. In this video, I explain distinct forms of multinational enterprising and in which context they are likely to arise. A multinational enterprise arises when a firm um, from a particular country, which we call the home economy, sets up activities abroad in at least one host economy. Um, initially, firms often internationalize through exports, uh, but that does not involve foreign direct investment. An exporting firm has its entire production in the, um, in the home economy um, and ships its product to a foreign nation. Um, firms that are multinational um, have part of their production process or their sales process or the design process taking place in abroad locations. Now, there are costs of having businesses abroad. First, a firm is not able to fully benefit from its economies of scale. If you divide operations over two different factories um, or two different departments, one in the home and the other in the host economy, then each of these departments has less work to do than if the work would be combined in one single department at home. If the activities are characterized by economies of scale, that is, they get cheaper as you do more of the um, activity, then these economies of scale cannot be realized if the firm operates in multiple environments. What is more, having multiple departments spread out over different countries implies international coordination, which is difficult. You need to ensure that the foreign subsidiary um, um, follows or complies with the uh, internal rules of the organization. You need to um, think of a way to um, incentivize foreign staff members who may have a different expectation of the firm um, you need to ensure finances in different locations. Hence, setting up foreign subsidiaries um, massively increases the coordination across border within the firm. A third, a multinational enterprise is open to attacks on its legitimacy from multiple um, countries. In a home economy, what you do needs to be accepted by the home economy um, actors. So you need to comply with government regulations, for example, in the home economy. But if you operate from multiple, uh, if you operate in multiple uh, contexts, then you need to comply with the regulations in all of the contexts in which you are active. And this applies to government regulations, but also perhaps to expectations that staff members may have, or. Um, um, dealings with non-governmental organizations, um, different suppliers, um, and whatnot. And if you um, if you go abroad, um, you enjoy fewer economies of scale. Um, the firm needs to engage in extensive international coordination and um, may is open to attacks on its legitimacy from multiple angles. It needs to comply also with um, a larger number of rules that may potentially conflict. And these are all costly activities. The fact that we observe the existence of multinational enterprises, so the fact that they are there, um, then has to implicate that there are offsetting benefits to having um, subsidiaries abroad. Um, there are definitely costs to operating in multiple countries. So if it is worthwhile to a profit maximizing firm to set up facilities abroad, there should be benefits that compensate for these costs. All right, um, I'm going to distinguish horizontal and vertical uh, multinational enterprises, um, and I will explain what these offsetting benefits may be for each of the two categories. In a separate clip, I've distinguished the two with the help of poetry, um, but um, here we talk academic language. A horizontal multinational enterprise is a business unit that replicates the activities that took place in the home economy in a host economy. And these activities, they can be um, design, production, sales, um, or any other um, activity that the firm is involved in. 
Um, so what a company does, is, if it is a horizontal multinational enterprise, is that it produces not only in the home economy, but also in the host economy. And perhaps it then sources from the same home economy suppliers to different international factories. Um, and then it um, sends, it, it channels its production to the different local markets in which these factories are organized. A vertical multinational enterprise um, takes one step of the business process and places that step in a foreign country. So the product moves from one country to the other. For example, you take um, your raw components from one country, um, bring that into the home economy for, uh, for further processing, then you transport it again to another country where the product is assembled, and from that uh, factory you ship it to different sales. Um, locations or to a single sales location. Different sales locations will be a horizontal aspect in the m &E. And these vertical and horizontal multinational enterprises exist under distinct conditions. Horizontal multinational enterprises are particularly worthwhile if there are um, either low economies of scale um, so it doesn't matter that much if you separate the activity in two different countries or if the home and the host economy are both um, substantial enough to reach it to realize economies of scale in a different uh, nation. So large foreign countries tend to be favorable conditions to establish um, a business there in that host economy. Um, also, if there are um, differences between what customers want from the uh, product or the, the use that they have with the product, the demands that they have of the product in the different countries, it may make sense to set up different production uh, facilities uh, there. Another reason why we might see um, horizontal multinational enterprises or horizontal multinationalization as it is called is um, high trade cost. If it is very expensive to move a final product from one nation to the other, um, then that adds to the price in the country in which you would sell it and then export um, becomes expensive, um, becomes comparably expensive. Let's say if there is a, uh, an import tariff on cars, on foreign cars, then as a German manufacturer you may want to set up a production facility in the United States um, because you can then ship the components to the United States which should then be a tax exempt, otherwise it wouldn't work, um, and assemble the cars in the US, rather than assembling a car in Germany and exporting that to the US when a tax would be, uh, would be applied. So if there are high trade costs, it may be worthwhile to circumvent these trade costs by setting up a production facility in the country that has these, uh, these import tariffs or quota. This is all... Um, the, this all refers to the case where you set up a different production facility abroad along with a production facility at home. Um, and in fact, you may then have production facilities in, um, in, different, uh, in many different countries, uh, one by one, and in many different countries. The vertical multinational enterprise transports its product from one country to the other before it reaches the final um, consumer. So for these, trade costs actually need to be low. If there are high trade costs on, let's say, shipping components uh, from one uh, country to the next, then all these trade costs add up to the final price. So um, let's say producing car components in Germany, assembling them in the United States, assembling them in, uh, in let's say, France, um, could become very costly if there is a high tariff and high import tariff on um, on German car man components in, uh, in the United States, and if there's a high tariff in France on um, imported cars from the United States. Um, and in that sense, it, then it may make more sense to um, produce and assemble the car in Germany and send that to, uh, to France um, consumers. So trade costs, high trade costs, um, are inhibit the, um, the, the founding of vertical multinational enterprises. What is an enormous stimulus for uh, vertical multinational enterprises are differences between countries in what an economist called um, factors of production, um, so the relative factor prices. If these are, if labor, for example, is far cheaper in one country than the other, um, it may actually make sense 
to um, to shift labor intensive parts of the business process to that uh, to that nation and we've seen that a lot in upcoming economies where um, companies would design a product in a developed economy and then assemble the product in a country where wages are relatively low only to then import the assembled product back into the uh, developed economy um, the lower labor costs then allow the firm to charge lower prices in the end Similarly, you could have lower factor prices in terms of land, um, um, materials that are available, um, any, anything that goes into the production process, the uh, production factor that is, can have different prices in different economies. And these price differences may be so, um, and these price differences may be such that it is worthwhile to establish a uh, subsidiary abroad. So, Low trade costs are a stimulus for vertical multinational enterprises, whereas high trade costs stimulate the establishment of horizontal multinational enterprises. Differences in factor prices are a stimulus for vertical multinational enterprises, whereas differences in what consumers want from or what governments demand from a firm um, stimulate horizontal multinational enterprises. And economies of scale are um, inhibit uh, economies of scale inhibit the establishment of horizontal multinational enterprises, whereas they are not relevant for establishing vertical multinational enterprises. <laughs>